And welcome to the V Function session here at Cloud Architecture Summit, where we'll learn how low code and AI are making it easier than ever to modernize and migrate your legacy apps to the cloud. And our speaker this morning is Samantha Cartwright, Vice President Global Alliances and Channels at V Function. Samantha, welcome. Hey, thank you, Vance, for having me. I'm excited to talk to you guys today. It's going to be good. You know, we're glad to have Samantha with us this morning. She drives vFunction partnerships with cloud providers, AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud, as well as leading system integrators. Her mission, in part, is to help customers achieve quick, easy, and error-free migration of their Java apps to the cloud. And the session this morning is entitled AI for Application Modernization, Accelerate Your Journey to Cloud Native Architecture. You know, many enterprises these days use lift and shift approach to get their legacy apps to the cloud, but that doesn't fix tech debt or provide the benefits of microservices or cloud native architecture. So Samantha today will show us how vFunction fills that gap. We'll learn how vFunction's AI ML, low code and deep support for refactoring lowers the cost and speeds delivery of moving Java legacy apps to the cloud. And we'll even get a demo this morning because seeing is believing. And just a quick reminder before I hand it to Samantha, you can download today's slides and get some other great resources, white papers and other downloads. Just click any of the links under the viewing area and they're yours, all without any registration. And we'd love you to connect with our speakers. So to connect with Samantha, just type in the submit a question area. So with that, Samantha, tell us about AI for application modernization. Thanks, Vance. Excited to be here today. So today I want to talk to you guys about how you can accelerate your modernization projects for your most complex legacy Java apps and really overcome big challenges and hurdles related to modernization. I want to walk you through how a Fortune 500 financial company went from a stalled modernization initiative and negative ROI to modernizing multiple Java applications within weeks using our platform. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So first I wanna talk about some of the big industry challenges related to modernization that you're probably experiencing now and that we've seen working with CIOs, leaders in IT, and even some of our partners. So the first big one is innovation velocity. So you have monolithic applications that are legacy, they're getting bigger, technical debt's growing, and what's pictured here is really the path it takes for a monolithic application to reach innovation. As you can see in this picture, it's not an easy one at all. So you experience things like your long test cycles, long release cycles, you're unable to meet business requirements, there's poor customer experience. This really leads to a competitive disadvantage, and oftentimes we see for every dollar spent, only a small fraction of it is going to innovation and the rest is spent on technical debt and keeping the lights on for that specific application. So as a result of this slow innovation velocity and engineering velocity, what happens is application scalability becomes a huge problem. You have things like excessive TCO, you can't scale out your apps, there's no elasticity. And again, it's really impacting your user and your customer experience. Microservices, however, offer a solution to make apps scalable, cost efficient, and utilize those on-demand services like serverless technologies that the cloud providers offer. So I'd like to talk about another challenge before we get into some of the case studies and the differences between tactical and strategic modernization. One of the big ones that we see is around modernizing without the business logic. Monolithic architecture really is three components. There's the UI, the business logic, and the database. Oftentimes we see customers modernize just the UI. So this is giving a shiny new car look and feel, but with an old rusty lawnmower engine. It's not going fast, driving experience is poor. You probably get the analogy of that now. But not modernizing the business logic will cause more long-term harm and issues than it, what it's worth. So let me give you an example. So we had a customer who launched a mobile app to enable better user experience for its customers. Sounds great. You're going to have this beautiful new UI. So they added an API layer connecting to a legacy backend system. Customer adoption and use exceeded projections by like 10x. And the backend of the application couldn't even handle the exponential growth in API calls or database transactions. So this led to the opposite of the desired effect where the customers experience downtime and again, that poor user experience. So if you don't modernize the business logic first, you're really gonna stall out your modernization. 
So the next thing I want to talk about are kind of the differences between tactical and strategic modernization and how we view modernization at V-Function. We feel that it falls into two camps. So again, there's the tactical modernization and the strategic modernization. And let's take a look at both. So tactical modernization. This may include upgrading frameworks, Java versions, patching security, and putting possibly your monolith into a container. That's basically a rehost. So you see some benefits like improved security, you simplify DevOps, but you're not addressing the app in such a way that you would see the true benefits of cloud native services, but you did take the first step on the journey. The other modernization camp that we define is the strategic modernization. So this is where you're gonna see the most value from the cloud, but also it's the hardest to do, especially without automation as you're dealing with oftentimes millions of lines of code and complexity and history. But this is where you're gonna see the most cloud benefit by breaking that monolith into microservices which then removes you know, your technical debt, you're improving your architectures, and you can really start seeing the true benefits of cloud native. So let's talk a little bit about just some prime use cases for our platform before we dive into the case study and do the demo. So typically customers with a broad application estate, they have a lot of applications, they don't know where to begin their journey, and our platform can help them make decisions on what apps to start with based on ease and impact to the business. So we like to view modernization really in two camps, as I mentioned before. So there's tactical modernization and there's strategic modernization, and let's take a look at both. So with tactical modernization, this may include upgrading frameworks, Java versions, patching security, and putting a monolith into a container which is basically a rehost. You see some of the benefits like improved security and simplified DevOps, but you're not addressing the app in such a way that you would see the true benefits of cloud native services. But you took the first step on the journey. Strategic modernization, this is where you're gonna see the most value from the cloud, but also it's the hardest to do without automation as you're dealing with millions of lines of code and complexity. But this is where you're gonna see the most cloud benefit by breaking that monolithic application into microservices, which then will remove technical debt, improve the architecture. So you can really start seeing the true benefits of cloud native. Now let's jump into what V function does. So we are an AI platform for app modernization. The V function platform was developed for developers and architects to be able to successfully accomplish strategic modernization at scale. We take monolithic Java applications, we assess them, analyze them, design them, and ultimately break them into microservices at the click of a button. Ultimately, this helps build that repeatable factory model so you can onboard apps, analyze them, and continuously modernize. So just to summarize with three numbers here. So we speed up modernization efforts by 20X. This allows you to do more modernizations. We help you reduce the cost of the modernization project by 3x or more, depending on the size of the app. And we'll get into that in a little bit with the demo. Ultimately, though, we help you de-risk that entire project. So let's talk a little bit about some of the strategic modernization use cases for using our platform. So customers with a broad application estate. So they have a lot of applications. They don't know where to begin their journey. Our platform can help you make decisions on what apps to start with based on ease and impact. The middle one, so customers that have megalithic applications, these are the huge apps with millions of lines of code. So they began the journey, it's slow moving, and oftentimes they don't have the right skill set or expertise or tools to even refactor the app. And it's very hard without automation. The other one is customers that began their cloud native journey, maybe did a lift and shift to start, and now they're ready to dive straight into modernizing. So addressing their technical debt head on and reaping the true benefits of cloud. So now I would like to just dive into a case study just to walk you through a typical example of what we've seen. So for this specific one, this is a Fortune 100 financial services company that spent years and about $10 million modernizing CI, CD, DevOps, and infrastructure. And with an, if they build it, they will come type of app strategy. They were stuck. And we see this a lot. Modernization projects, they get kicked off and then they stall because they're starting to use tools not fit for purpose and they have skills gap. And then ultimately it boils down to complexity. So 
Let's move along with this case study. So there was an internal mandate for cloud readiness. So they began investing tens of millions of dollars into developing a secure cloud platform onto which they would be migrating hundreds of traditional applications. So after several years of hard work, research and analysis, only a small percentage of their legacy applications were actually running on their cloud infrastructure. This was due to the size and complexity of their legacy job applications. So they had a massive legacy footprint. The company processes around $1 billion per day. And this was mainly through the legacy systems built with Java and Oracle's WebLogic server. Their largest and most complex application is a 20 year old monolith with 10,000 classes and 8 million lines of code. And again, after spending nearly two years internally trying to wrap their arms around this enormous and business critical application, the team was really frustrated with lack of progress. There were applications that were de-scoped from lack of automation. So several years of this intensive product strategy sessions with both internal and external teams achieved limited results and refactoring still wasn't within scope. So without a solution to automatically and intelligently extrapolate and organize the applications into something that was understandable and actionable, this company was in a tough position. So just to sum up the pain, there was no evident engineering velocity improvement and IT leadership had little to show for the modernization investment with only three applications built from scratch running on their modern environment. So what was the solution? So a complete complexity analysis. So V function provided a multi-phase approach to automate the analysis of the company's legacy Java applications, assessing the complexity of selected apps to determine readiness for modernization. We automatically created a blueprint of the apps. AI and machine learning and data science. So using our patented methods of static analysis, dynamic analysis, dead code detection, plus data science and AI, we help them prioritize what applications to modernize first. Last one is actionable recommendations with automated execution. So our platform allows companies to design services using the interactive UI design studio, providing the ability to refine service boundaries, automatically refactor classes, assign code to common libraries and conduct impact analysis of design decisions based on the architect's input. So let's talk about some of the case study results. V function provided a cost effective, practical and accelerated way to modernize their current legacy apps to enable them to run on a new environment, allowing them to finally capitalize on their historic investments resulting in a big win for their business, for the application teams, as well as for the executive leadership. Another one, ROI, the combination of V function and the company's cloud ecosystem built on AWS had enabled them to move forward with their strategy of refactoring and migrating hundreds of legacy Java applications to the cloud. This was faster and again, less expensive than ever imagined. And the IT execs could actually show a return on investment that they didn't have before. They had a 25X time to market reduction. This was huge for them. So the company's massive cut in time to market directly reduced the cost of modernization by more than 3x compared to manually decomposing the application without B function. All right, so now I'd like to give you a quick preview of, of the platform before we dive into a demo. So I'll give a quick overview. We'll do some questions at the end, but let's talk a little bit about what our platform actually does in a more in-depth manner. So the vFunction platform takes you on the complete journey from assessment and learning of the monolithic app to fully functioning microservices. So the first step on the platform is what we call the assessment hub. So this is a lightweight deployment. You're up and running in 10 to 20 minutes. The assessment hub was purpose built for decision makers. So using AI to condense all that complex data into three high level metrics to assess, prioritize and drive immediate action on your modernization projects. Oftentimes what we see with assessment tools is a lot of data without any action to it. So you can begin assessments on applications and get an automated report on technical debt breakdown, modernization recommendations based on what we call worst technical debt offenders. And again, this is really the starting point to building that business case that allows you to make decisions on what to modernize first. 
The second step is the learn phase. Really the goal here during the learn and assessment phase is to identify flows within the application that would correlate with specific domains. And when we're thinking about decomposing an application, we're looking to decompose it in such a way that makes sense from a business value perspective. Does it make sense to maintain these as separate services? So the middle part, the analysis and automation phase is really the place where you assess the complexity of all your applications to determine readiness for modernization and possible changes that you wanna make. The Modernization Hub is an interactive microservices design studio where you can perform tasks like merging services or even splitting services directly on the UI. So you can design, blueprint, calculate the ROI for refactoring, re-architecting, or even rewriting your application. And once you're actually comfortable with the design, this is when you would move into that service extraction phase where you literally just click a button and it creates a service specification file for each of the microservices. This provides you all of the information needed from the vFunction platform to create all of the services. So by the end of these four phases, you have new projects, you have new microservices with RESTful APIs that are ready for deployment on any cloud environment. With that being said, I'd like to go ahead and jump into a demo. So this is what we call the modernization dashboard. This is your single pane of glass or bird's eye view that really allow you to manage your modernization projects. So you can see things like how many apps have I created or loaded on the platform? How many are in the learning phase where vFunction's collecting the data and assessing these specific apps? How many are in the analysis phase where you're actually working on the applications within the platform to design out how you want your microservices architecture to look? And then ultimately, how many services have been extracted and created? And the big green box, how many have completed the modernization journey? So below, you're going to see these four boxes. So these are really your summary statistic view. So giving you information on things like licensing, the summary view complexity breakdown of your apps, the average time to modernization, and platform usage. So if we click the arrow below here, we're going to get a detailed breakdown of all of these phases and all of the applications within those phases. For the sake of this demo, I'm going to jump straight into the analysis tab to see what applications you may want to consider refactoring. So these are the applications that have already gone through part of the assessment phase where vFunction, again, has two different types of assessments. So depending on where you're at in your journey, and I'll show you both types in this demo. So the first scenario I'm going to show you is with the vFunction assessment hub. So I'm going to go find my favorite application and show you guys a vFunction assessment report. So let's go into there and go to base report. All right, perfect. So I just want to mention, unlike static assessment tools, which I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with, they provide developers right with a lot of data points, which oftentimes isn't even actionable data. They don't drive modernizations and they leave many high value complex apps out of these project scopes, which is sometimes, again, this isn't gonna help you take action on a modernization. B function though, our assessment hub uses patented analysis and machine learning to provide decision makers the critical business indicators and metrics needed to immediately start prioritizing apps for modernization. So let me just explain here what you're seeing. So for this specific application, you can see that for every dollar spent, how much is actually going to innovation and how much is contributing to my technical debt? So here you can see 36 cents is going to go to innovation. The other 64 cents is going to my technical debt. So Furthermore, Assessment Hub is going to identify the top 10 classes that contribute most toward that technical debt. And on the right-hand side, you can see a TCO calculation where the bottom number shows the benefit gained by simply refactoring these top 10 worst offending classes alone. So let's look a little bit further at the second part of the report. So you heard me talk about actionable data. So Assessment Hub, we use AI to condense all of the complex data into three high level indicators to accurately prioritize modernization, but basically these three numbers. So technical debt, complexity, and risk. And let's talk a little bit about each. So the debt index score is a single metric that takes into account things like risk and complexity and other factors to help you prioritize your starting point for modernization. The risk index 
is correlated to the length of the dependencies. So this analyzes how likely a change in one part of the application will affect other parts of the application downstream. And then the complexity index. So this is measuring the degree to which class dependencies are entangled between themselves. So reducing the level of modularity in the code. And lastly, if you notice these three horizontal lines, we've also provided an average of the three metrics across the portfolio of installed applications so that you can help prioritize modernization and refactor candidates. So let's summarize a little bit of, with Assessment Hub. This is best used when you have multiple applications to assess. This is going to help you make the best decision with the right actionable data on what applications to consider refactoring first that would make the most impact for your business. So keep in mind here, though, I, I will mention, once the full platform is actually purchased and you decide to kickstart the modernization process, there's no extra install needed, and you can continue with the deeper analysis and microservices design after using Assessment Hub. So let's go ahead and continue. If we scroll down below, this is now the full analysis, both static and dynamic. So you may have noticed that number on the right-hand corner of the applications on the home screen. The number represents complexity. So here you can see for this specific application, it's pretty darn complex. So these parameters are tied directly to the V-function decomposition, like class exclusivity, runtime, service topology, and more. So the report is going to show you the exact services that have been identified. So this is, again, that deeper and full ROI report that contains the dynamic analysis. So I'm going to go ahead and jump into another application just to show you what it looks like when we actually start that modernization project. So now we're going to jump into what's called the modernization hub. And this is, again, where you kickstart designing out your microservices architecture, ultimately doing your first extraction on the platform. What we're seeing here is the ordering management system application. So you can already visualize the potential domains that you can extract. This is done automatically out of the box. So each sphere represents a potential service that can be extracted. And when I hover over the service, you can see that it highlights it on the right. So you have the, a bunch of these, if we just name a few off. So inventory service, shipping service, payment service. And you see that these are all actual domains. And the names are all named by the machine learning and analysis in the platform. The color of each sphere represents exclusivity. So what do we mean by exclusivity? So high exclusivity means it's easier to extract the service. And the greener the bubble, the easier it will be to decompose the application. But it doesn't mean that you shouldn't refactor the ones in blue as well. And this is where things like merging a service will make an impact on exclusivity. We'll get to that part in a bit. But part of what goes into the smarts and cleverness in the platform is being able to identify those services regardless of existing endpoints in the system. This is why we need to see the actual flows in the system, either in a production or pre-production environment, where we actually run tests on the application in order to expose the different flows. Here you can see the dotted lines. So these represent present calls between services. And what's really powerful here is when you actually click on a specific service, you can see all the different resources that it's actually consuming. You can also see the actual interdependencies between those services. And you can start working on the platform, defining entry points and refining boundaries of those services. So here we see the dotted lines, and these are the present calls between services. And what's really powerful here is when you click on a specific service, you can see the different resources that vFunction analyzes. So things over here like beans and static variables, synchronization objects, database tables, transactions, and so forth. And again, if you click on a specific service, you're going to see like right here, all of the shared resources among these services. So I'd like to show you one more thing before we actually start merging services and performing actual actions on the platform. So let's take a look at the modify fulfillment controller. So you see here, you have things like entry points, dynamic classes, static classes, resources, and dead code. So let's go ahead and click on explore tree. So here you can see all the functionality that actually goes into a specific service. This is very useful if you need to refine entry points and boundaries for this specific service. So let's go ahead and go back. So I want to show you a single action here of how you can work directly on the V function 
studio in the modernization hub. So let's say we want to merge two services. There's the diner's payment service and there's a payment service. So as an architect, I may decide, you know what? I want to have a single service, not multiple payment services. So I simply can go and drag and drop over the payment service. And V function asks me, would you like to merge these two services? I will click confirm and it recalculates the entry points and recalculates all the functionality that goes into those services with their interdependencies. And by the time it finishes, you now see that I have a green service, which means it has higher exclusivity and it's easier to move and extract. Again, this is one of the many examples of actions you can take directly on the modernization hub. But let's say now I want to extract this service and create microservices from it. So I simply go over here, let's make sure that it is saved, which I think it already is. Yeah, it's already saved. So now what you're gonna see is on this service creation tab, if I click this, this is where you're gonna configure the service for extraction. Like things like what is the target platform, the dependency repository. And from there, it's just a matter of configuration and clicking service extraction to get to the final stages needed for actual service extraction in the microservices code. So for the sake of this demo, though, I think we're going to stop here. We'll allow for some questions back at the end. Thanks, everybody, for listening to what we had to say today. We would love to talk to you. And just to kind of recap, these are common issues and things that we see and we want to help our customers solve. So things like assessing your application estate, accelerating your modernization programs. Do you have an urgent application that needs to be modernized due to business issues? Or maybe you're already in the cloud and you have a fat container and you want to break up that big container into microservices. So we're here to help. I think that Vance has some of our contact details on this right now. So please feel free to get in touch with us. We would love to talk to you. Vance, back to you. Samantha, wow, what a great session. A really good look at legacy modernization, the trials and tribulations, but also the great new modernization technologies that V functions bring into the whole process. Really great session. Thanks, fans, for having me. I really enjoyed it. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to ask. We enjoyed having you here too, Samantha. In fact, we have questions right now, so we can get to a few of those because you really triggered a lot of thoughtful comments and questions, I'd say. And they're both high level as well as maybe into the weeds, especially in the demo and some parts we didn't have time to really explore in depth. So with your permission, let's go to some questions. All right, let's go for it. You know, first off, let's just kind of paint the picture of just how much capability V function is bringing to the folks looking at legacy modernization, particularly Java modernization. It looked as though you've got a full legacy modernization lifecycle platform. You do the assessment, you do analysis and then design, and then you actually help trigger the refactoring and building if necessary, as well as deployment all the way through. Is that a fair assessment of all the features that you've got? That's exactly right. So we can take somebody who hasn't assessed their Java monoliths yet all the way through to actually breaking them into microservices on a single platform. I think it's one of the uniques that what we bring to the market. There's lots of tools out there. Again, we talked about it that do that assessment piece. They provide you a ton of data with no action. But what we're doing is we're bringing that assessment piece to the enterprise, as well as giving them the capability to take their monolithic Java applications, take action on the data that we provide, and break it into efficient microservices. Yeah, it's really fantastic. And just a quick kind of on-ramping type question, Samantha, to talk about that. Given that you provide so much capability and functionality, when you're working with customers that have kind of had to handcraft their own solution from a variety of tools and platforms, even language support, what are you finding are some of their legacy tools that they're bringing to kind of integrate with or work with vFunction so they can get up to speed quicker? We see people kind of use what I call a hodgepodge approach. There's a lot of tools out there that people already have in-house. So you have your APM tools, your static analysis tools. They're using basically a lot of these things to try and piecemeal together what it would look like to potentially break these into microservices. You need the data, but it's not the right data. And that's really the problem. So oftentimes what we've seen is vFunction has actually come in mid-project because a lot of these enterprises, they get stuck. They start down a path using tools not fit for purpose. And then we need to come in 
and basically do the deep analysis and show them the actionable data that they need to move into microservices. Really great, really great. Let's get even more technical. You know, you mentioned your focus at V Function on decomposing the business logic layer. And the question here says, does V Function also decompose the database? So that's another key area in the modernization process, right? So our dependency analysis and all of our analytics look at all of the database calls. So part of the microservices recommendation that we use and the re-architecture approaches take into account trying to decompose where the database calls are. So we don't decompose the database, but we provide all the mapping in terms of what services are calling what database tables. And typically then afterwards you have microservices that are calling portions of a database and those were distinct isolated calls. So it's much easier to decompose once you have the re-architecture process concluded within V function. So typically people do the microservice decomposition, which takes into account all of the database table calls, but then move into a cloud native database, or sometimes they just leave a database as is because data is something that's very sacred to a lot of people and they don't want to touch it. It's all part of how you're planning to engage in that modernization rollout. Yeah, really good point. I can totally understand that. You know, you mentioned tech debt a couple times in both the slides and the demo, and certainly tech debt is kind of in the eye of the beholder often. One man's tech debt is another man's don't touch it sort of code. How does V function identify and remove tech debt is the question. I think that's a great question. So tech debt is really at the core of modernizing. Tech debt is very heavy to innovate. So these lean organizations, again, goes back to for every dollar they use on innovation is about 25 cents when 75 go into actually feeding the technical debt. That's a real problem when you're actually trying to solve for modernization. And it's really important that you assess these and measure the amount of technical debt as you engage in these modernization projects so you can prioritize what applications you should consider modernizing first based on the biggest impact to your business. You know, let's drill into a little bit of the actual refactoring or the transformation part. I know that we were kind of limited on time, so the demo didn't go all the way through the life cycle, but the question comes in with V function, is my legacy code actually cloud native and ready to be put into containers? Yes. So the code that we give you at the end of the platform, when you click the service extraction button on the platform, it is fully ready to go and be deployed into containers, into the cloud. Absolutely. Wow. Fantastic. And just to get an idea on scope here, Samantha, does V function work on any Java EE or J2 EE application code? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. It does. Fantastic. Fantastic. You know, you also mentioned this theme called dead code. And I think some people may think of dead code as tech debt that they don't really use that much. But I think you have a different view of dead code. How do you identify and think of dead code, especially as we go through the process of assessment all the way through migration? Yeah. So first, you need to analyze what is running through the dynamic analysis and then synthesize that with the static analysis. So we're correlating the data, basically. So we're able to compare and see exactly what code is, is actually running for each service that we identify versus code that isn't running. So then you can dive into each and see the root cause and why it is or isn't running. And then you can make the decision on if you want to automatically remove it, if that makes sense. So a safety net, it will ask you, is this code specific to a flow or dead code for processes that only run like once a month, for example? Wow, really cool, really cool. You know, Samantha, I'm looking at the clock and time is just about up, but just one more comment or question here. And they comment on the fact that through the demo, there wasn't much code involved, actual real coding. It was a lot of AI and a lot of configuration. Talk about some of the under the covers AI and automation features that you've got running that we didn't get a big chance to look at that is helping eliminate a lot of that coding. Yeah, look, that's one of the things that people are always shocked about when they see the platform initially. I think modernization in the past, especially refactoring, you know, has been heavy into looking at the code directly, actually working within the code. What we've done is through AI and machine learning kind of behind the scenes is made it so that it's easy to use for a user to go into the platform and perform simple tasks 
like merging a service and recalculating all of the dependencies and entry points automatically so that they don't have to go back into the code and do that themselves. So we wanted to make the platform as user friendly as possible so that it makes it easy to modernize, but also will help them accelerate the modernization process, especially since there is quite a bit of skills gap out there when it comes to actually refactoring an app. We're bringing kind of the possible that wasn't there before. Yeah, really impressive. In fact, if I could just kind of offer just kind of a layman's observation, it seems as though through the demo, you've done an awful lot of prep work on service modeling, not just in a traditional microservice, but how legacy systems think of services and integration and collaboration with one another. Is there anything to the fact that you've got this sort of really master list, great library of service models? Yeah, I mean, look, we've trained thousands of applications with our algorithms, and that's part of the smarts that have gone into this whole entire platform. Cool, cool. You know, with that, Samantha, we have to wrap, but it's really been a great session and a great demo. I'm sure people want to learn more. There are probably some eyes bugging out right now, especially among our larger company enterprises. How can we learn more about vFunction or maybe even have them go hands-on to try it for themselves? No, absolutely. So, I mean, please request a demo. If you want to see a deeper demo of the product, we are happy to do so. Contact us again, if you have an immediate project right now and you're in the middle of it and you're refactoring an application, we would love to talk to you. Or if you're at the beginning of your journey, we would love to talk to you. So please go to our website, get in touch. We would excited to hear from you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Samantha Cartwright, VP Global Alliances and Channels at VFunction. Thanks again for a great session and great demo, and especially for taking so many different Q&As from the audience. Really appreciate it. Nice session. Thanks, Vance. It was good to be here. Yeah, and we were glad to have you. And just a quick note, we've got some of the resources Sam mentioned right here in the little information box below the view screen, including a link that will take her directly to her slides. That's that big red button there. And as you can tell, there is a ton of innovation going on at vFunction these days. And so at the end of Samantha's slides, you'll get a slide like this that'll take you directly to the vFunction site for other technologies we didn't have room in this room to promote. Just download the slides. All these links will be live. Thanks again, Samantha, and thanks to the audience for some really great questions. Yep. Thank you, Vance.